Well, welcome to historic Santa Paula. I actually really like this town. It's uh, it's it's got a lot of character, even though I think it, you know, it's sort of become irrelevant, you know, with our current economy and you know, the way the way we do things right now in in California and the U.S. But they've got a really cool old historic railway station and. I think they actually still do regular tour lines on it, um, but I'm not sure much else other than that. I think there's uh, something on Halloween you can ride on the train and then, uh, you know, shoot zombies with paintball guns or something like that. But maybe, maybe that's more on the Fillmore side. <clears throat> but uh, anyway, so yeah, I'm gonna go. Uh, go up drive a, a little loop up around to like Ojai and and actually you know head up to uh, to Montecito which is for those of you who don't know where where Oprah lives um, <laughs> and uh, and yeah I haven't actually been this route before well I've been this route before but I haven't been up to to Montecito before so I, I just kind of want to do a, a little loop-de-loop -loop and drive around there, there again. Some of these are, you know, some nice country roads. They're not fast roads necessarily, but they're not slow ones either. And uh, again, just sort of a. I, I want to get kind of a good mix with all of the different driving uh, conditions that you can expect: elevation changes, declines, increases, uh, city driving, uh, freeway driving. So, you know, with a, uh, <clears throat> you know, if I end up going about 300 miles on this charge, then what you'll end up with is, uh, you know, about a third of that will be high speed freeway driving, about a third of it will be this sort of city driving, and about a third of it will be, um, you know, like kind of a, uh, kind of a, uh, um, I guess country driving if you will so not a whole lot of stops sort of steady state 40 45 miles an hour 50 miles an hour stuff like that uh, basically the type of driving that you would do if you were out in the countryside um, which I have found is actually for electric vehicles tends to be one of the more efficient um, of course I guess I could really divide that into quarters because uh, in another video segment I just sort of showed the results of going, uh, um, you know, slow speed freeway driving, which is uh, very, very economical if you drive properly. And uh, I, I forgot to reset my display on it. I mean, you can tell on the main energy screen. Um, but, you know, it was somewhere between six and seven miles per kilowatt hour uh, for that segment. Of course, what that also doesn't explain or doesn't show is that there was a, uh, a decent portion of that driving that was still at 60 to 65 miles an hour, uh, probably about a third of that. So, so all told, like I said, it would be a pretty good mix of about 30, 30% uh, freeway driving, 30% country driving, about 30% city driving. Um, and the weather is going to get a little bit worse. We're going farther north and we're going up into the mountains. So, uh, but again, it's, I think it's a, it's a nice drive. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty scenic and I'm sure actually a lot of car reviewers make this drive as well. So notice just to, to get to Santa Barbara is going to be 50 miles and I don't know if I'm going to go all the way to Santa Barbara, probably not, but um, you know, it's, it's an option. So just this, uh, this incline and increase in, in speed, you know, has already started to uh, affect the, uh, the efficiency, right? I'm doing 45 miles an hour, but I'm gaining an elevation more or less and I'm down to about 4.5 miles per kilowatt hour, um, which for this car, you know, 
these speeds is, is not great, but like I said, it's also an elevation change, temperature drop. Um, I, I didn't check the weather. We were supposed to have gotten rain yesterday, um, but I thought that was supposed to be over, but it looks like we could very well get rain again today. There's still some standing water on the side of the roads, but the, the roads are dry, which, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of your efficiency losses driving in the rain too come from, you know, slippery pavement, that sort of thing. So something else I wanted to note, and it's going to be difficult, like maybe this new camera angle captures it. Um, I'm hoping it does. Uh, and also I have to be careful of bicyclists. There seems to be a lot of them around. But uh, on your, you know, as people call it, the guessometer, the G-O-M, as you'll see, the, the acronym, it's on the left side of the screen. Um, right now, you know, it has my maximum of 108, it has my minimum at 74, and it has my, uh, my average at 91. So that's the expected miles of range that I have left. What I found, though, is there's, there are actually, there's a bar that goes up from the middle gauge and goes down from the middle gauge on the outer left-hand side. So if you can see that, well, I hope you can. Um, and what I, I, I was struggling to try and figure out what it was, um, and uh, I, I finally sort of figured it out. What it is, is it's, it's estimating based on your current driving, right? So you have a, um, as it goes down, it's yellow, right? And it will actually, you know, range between that point. So the farther down to yellow it goes, um, what I found is the closer the closer it's um, getting to what it estimates to be your minimum range. Now, if you drive at a uh, certain speed or uh, at a certain energy usage for a sustained period of time, the bar will move, uh, <laughs> literally as well as figuratively. So it should always be trying to equalize on that middle number. So if you're driving around and you want to know based on your current driving which gauge on the guessometer you should be um, you should be paying attention to, uh, focus on the one that is getting the attention from that sidebar, the the green bar on the or the yellow bar on the left hand side, because that will tell you which range is more representative of what you can expect given your current driving. So in, in this case, and actually, you know, ironically, just sitting here, the bar is actually moving more toward the middle gauge, which is, which is weird. So the yellow is actually receding back up again. Uh, when you come down a hill or you hit a point where you start to drive more efficiently, you'll notice that the, the bar starts creeping up and it will be green. And again, that means that the more reliable number is going to start being that, that number at the top, the uh, sort of pie in the sky, uh, best case scenario number. So as you're driving, pay attention to that bar on the left hand side, because if you don't see it, generally that middle gauge on the guessometer is going to be um, pretty accurate. But if you see it green tracking up, you're, you're likely to get slightly better miles based on your current driving and if you start seeing it tracking down you're, you're likely to get fewer miles than that that middle gauge is telling you and you, you want to start paying attention to the minimum number that it's giving you in terms of in terms of miles that are going to be available so um, apparently though we're stuck here waiting for a bridge could be a troll a troll bridge, uh, but I am getting sort of gruff, so maybe that'll that'll uh, help us. Oh, there you go. Invoke the gruffness. Woohoo! I I really doubt that it's night. I see the next three miles, but you know, I I guess they have to 
keep that up for whatever reason. Um, one thing you'll notice too in Southern California is that very few people actually pay attention to, real, well, really any speed limit signs, um, but you know, primarily those that are under 55 miles an hour, or I should say actually 55 miles an hour and under. Um, the reason I say that is right now I'm being followed by a debadged uh, BMW. Um, looks like an E90. Uh, you know, and when, when you take the badges off of a BMW, it, it goes 10 miles an hour faster. So you, you, you have to be careful about that because, you know, these guys really want to drive fast. And, you know, for the most part, I don't mind. Um, but, uh, you know, as long as they're safe about it, I tend, again, to try and, uh, adhere as close to the speed limit as, as possible, um, while not being a, a nuisance to traffic, um, but, uh, it's not always possible in these parts. Uh, luckily I have some people in front of me to sort of diffuse the blame a little bit. But uh, yeah, it really, it really only takes uh, a little bit before someone in a pseudo performance car gets antsy and wants to drive much faster than the posted speed limit. So, <coughs> and it looks like we have another one lane bridge. See, that's why you drive these roads. You just never can tell what's going to happen. So. I doubt we're going to hit a light on this one. Oh, look, we, we lost the BMW. Huh. Go figure. But I will say this, already, again, it's tracking to lower. And, um, you know, my, my guessimeter, the low end of it, like I said, it actually refreshes very quickly in time. And, uh, so even though I've only driven a mile or two, it's already pulled uh, four miles off of my minimum expected range. So I'm down to 68 miles of expected range uh, minimum, um, which is kind of sad because I, I think mapping out this drive before, it was about um, 60 miles. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see if this light ever turns green. This time, we can't blame it on a troll, I don't think. Though there are plenty of those running around, too. Don't think I don't notice your comments.